Well, how opposite do you want it? It's an X chromosome and a Y chromosome. Those are opposite. Yeah. Boy, girl, man, woman. Yeah. Those are. That's enough opposite. You don't have to look for opposites. You got it right there. It's right there. Yeah. They are definitely. Yeah. It's important to be as much as you can on the same page. So the Jewish Federation, otherwise known as the Jewish Pentagon, no love for us there, yeah. Yeah, I can think of a better place to give you money, but let's not do politics tonight. Yeah. So, uh, they're talking about the, uh, what about being on the same page? What about enjoying similarity? What does it mean to be on the same page? Well, there was an organization here in Los Angeles, or wherever it was, that uh, hired a psychiatrist. It was the 60s. And a lot of our Jewish youth were getting involved in cults. C-U-L-T-S. Different cults. So the Federation hired a psychiatrist to go into, a, not a, a Jewish man, but not a religious man. So he had no trappings, no uh, tzitzit or yam kippi, all that kind of stuff. So they hired this psychiatrist to go undercover into a cult and get out the Jewish youth, like the college kids, from the different cults. What happened is, we lost the psychiatrist to a cult. Oh. Oh. He was a very nice Jewish man, but the cult, thank God, was Judaism. What happened was that he got involved. Someone said that a father was a cult, or orthodoxy, or Asia. It's a cult, it's a cult, and it's not a cult. It's called the religion of your grandparents, just one generation or two ago. That's what they all did. So what happened was that they, uh, what was I saying, that uh, <coughs> they went to get the Jewish the psychologist. Oh, so, the, so this psychiatrist went into the cult, I mean, went and got involved there. And uh, so he started getting, he started really enjoying the Yiddishkeit, that hardcore, authentic, traditional Judaism. To the point where he called me up one day and he said, Rabbi, I need you to come do some marriage counseling. My wife is not fond of my my new birthday present to myself. It wasn't a I had, it was a black hat. Ah. It was like a standard, you know, GI issue, uh, a city black hat with a home thing. Yet. And he was... Uh, and he says he started making some murmurings that he wants me not to have any more laughter in the house and uh, and that sort of thing. He doesn't want the kids to bring home the, the, the cheeseburgers and, and stuff like that. So my wife and I both went to their home, lovely home, very successful psychiatrist. And I, we talked to the wife. And the wife started laughing at us, and she said, you know what, we are, my husband and I are not on the same page. He was always very spiritual, that's why he got involved in cults and tried to understand the cults and get our Jewish young out of the cults. I have only two interests, and my, Olivia and I started laughing when she said, my two interests are tennis and shopping. That's it. That's all she wrote. She was not interested in being one hand breadth above the earth or, or meditation or, or anything like that that he was interested in. So that was Rabbi another second most important sentence and the most important prayer in our religion. With all your heart, but in Hebrew, even if you don't know Hebrew, you can get this. It should say, Love God with all your heart. It doesn't say that. It says, 
That means levavot shel chai, the plural, your hearts. You didn't know you had two, huh? No. You got two, not one. This could be the most important thing in the Kabbalah, one of, one of two of the most important facts in all of Kabbalah, that you don't have one heart, you have two. One heart is a natural heart, the other is passion. What's the second, and I'm pushing through, what's the second way to love? Soul. Thou should love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul. Everyone here has one. You have a soul. Now, I think I said last time that when the incoming, I was 20 years a rabbi, campus rabbi at UCLA, 20 years of incoming freshmen all had the same major. What was that? Psychology. Thank you. Because they're desperate to know who they are. They're 18, 19, 20, 21 years old. They want to know what makes me tick. Why do I react the way I do? Why does this person do it to me and another person doesn't? Why do you push my buttons? Why, does this, why is it great one day and not the other? Why do I love my mother and I call her and then I hang up on her and I'm angry and I'm fighting with my, my mother? My mother. In the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments, Honor your mother for long life, and if you don't, the deduction could be short life, God forbid. So, the idea of the two souls is, is, is one of the most important besides the other that I said. Most people think that a human is a composition composed of body and soul. Wrong. If that's the case, then we're all spiritual schizophrenics. Because we have these two levels of consciousness pulling us. The other side of the same coin. I love my significant other. I hate my significant other. Ah! I hate when you do that. I hate when you say that. I hate when you behave like that. But I love you. I'm staying with you forever. You're my soulmate. There are two souls, not one. The first soul enters in, it depends who you ask, but according to Kabbalah's conception. Boom! Aha! That's the first soul. The second soul comes about later. For a, a female, what age does the second soul come in? Twelve in a day. For a male, the second soul comes in at what age? That's what bar mitzvah is all about. Don't rip off the Jewish women. We're going to do Q&A after this. No, it's not, it's not 13. You're robbing her of a year of her life that she can do things. That she can bring down godliness. That she can attach herself to the almighty infinite God. It's 12 for a girl and 13 for a boy. The two souls, it's not that we're spiritual schizoids, it's we have this double level of, of, of consciousness. One is called the natural soul, doing what comes naturally. The other is called the holy soul. But what the Torah is requiring of us is to love God with all thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy Heart. souls in the plural. Natural soul is doing what comes naturally. You hit me, I'll hit you back. The divine soul, the holy soul, is, well, let me just set it up for you. You push the pause button. There's a two-second pause button. When you want to there's three vehicles of human expression. There's three ways that a person expresses themselves. If you don't know you have a soul, or two souls, think about it, meditate, contemplate, push the two-second pause button, and whether you're thinking a thought, or you want to say something, or you want to do something, think which soul is motivating you to think that thought 
or say those words, or do that deed. Someone insults you in public, and you think of a comeback. She's going to swear she didn't want to be born when I finish giving her the rejoinder and getting her back and what she did to me. Is that the natural soul or the holy soul? The natural no. soul. Well, it can't be the holy, divine, godly soul. It's got to be that natural, rational even, logical even soul. But loving God with your two souls, that's the commandment. Not just with your holy soul. It's easy to love God with your connection to God, the holy, divine, godly soul. But it's important to love God even with your natural soul. And the way to do that is not, and it's also called the animal soul. Because animal instinct, animal urge, that's what comes naturally. But that's not what the Torah is requiring of us. The Torah is telling us, love God not only with your holy soul, but with your natural soul. Meaning, push the two second pause button and think, which soul is motivating me to say these words to that person, or to do this deed to myself even? Let me just try to rush through an emotion. It's called the Ten Soul Powers. Three intellect powers and seven emotions. How many times does a man wrap the phone strap between his elbow, his elbow and his wrist? How many times? Seven. seven. Well, three here, or three here. Seven between elbow and wrist, seven times. What's the Kabbalistic meditation when you're wrapping those seven coils between your elbow and your wrist. The meditation is, I want to bind up all my seven emotions with a power higher than myself. What's the Kabbalistic meditation when you're winding three coils before the seven to make it ten soul powers on your bicep or the seat of your power or your... your and the three intellect powers. You can use your intellect to make, to hurt somebody back because they hurt you, or you can use your intellect to find a cure for cancer. You can, it depends what you do with it. There are certain things that are neither fish nor fowl. They're parts. They're, they're what you make of them. Time is, is not... It's not milk and inflation. It's not meat or dairy. It depends what you do with it. You can kill time. You're a murderer. You're murdering yourself. Time. Food. Intellect. Emotions. Love for your significant for your wife is a mitzvah. Love for someone else's wife is not a mitzvah. <laughs> so. <laughs> So, this, this, there's a lot to say. Ten soul powers in your soul, subdivided into three and seven, three intellect powers, seven emotions. There's a lot to talk about. You'll have to come back maybe in a couple of Tuesdays from now, but I finished. I want to keep to the time. So maybe we'll open up. If Bethel doesn't have any more announcements, we can open it up. Because we'll be back here in two weeks. We had a live feed. We had, a, like I said, around a few thousand views uh, to, uh, the last class. That's because all of you helped and forward and shared the video on your Facebook pages. Keep on doing that with this class as well. So this class can continuously grow. So again, thanks everyone for coming, for uh, tuning in and sharing. And uh, we'll have a few more minutes for the Q&A session. All right, again, thank you. And we'll be back here in two weeks on Tuesday again. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, you said that there were two hearts as well as two souls. So, it's feeling crowded. Like, you explained the two souls, and now you got two hearts. You have an animal heart okay, and good, a good, holy good. heart? Or? Good, 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 good question. The heart is really comes after the soul. In other words, there's two souls. Animal soul, divine soul. Two souls. Once they become pronounced and they have form, 
then they become harder. Oh, oh, the harder the soul not in the head. Well, the intellect soul is more in the head, oh, and the uh, the natural soul, animal soul, is more in the heart. Oh, okay. once they be they become defined, they have some body, they have a, an action or a thought or a deed that they want to do. Then it becomes goes from the general blah soul to actual heart, which is the step before you actually do something, whether it's thought, speech, or deed. But I appreciate the question. Wait, but this is a two. Right. So the one's the intellect, the one's the emotion part. Well, what is the animal soul, the divine soul, or the two hearts, or yeah. it, it goes like that, the uh, the back and forth. Okay, we have another question here from the Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Oh yeah. Now I just want to say one last thing. The conclusion. The, the Kabbalah says that on your birthday, and tonight is my birthday, your star Mazole Goyver shines the brightest, which means you have the power on your Jewish soul birthday to bless people. I want to bless everybody here and everybody who is listening that God should give you the blessings of the highest success beyond your highest estimate of yours, what you think it should be your success. God bless you all. Amen. 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 Thank you.